ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد one of the major traps of the shaitan a big major trap but before we go to that major trap, I want to explain something to you. The Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on water. And the Arsh is the throne. And the throne of Iblis, may Allah curse him, is also on water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us places to pray. The Masajid, Iblis gave the people the nightclubs also to pray it's a form of worship i want you to concentrate very carefully here now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the quran a book of guidance consisting of words advices a way of life it's been recited in a certain manner like not like normal words and iblis gave you what we're going to speak about today music words advices it's been sang in a certain way do you see now subhanallah azza wa so iblis is copying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything even in the way of guiding people he said okay one second if he's going to give them quran now sang in a beautiful way this is what they say sang unfortunately yeah recited in a certain way beautiful voice speaks about advice and a way of life and warning and everything what should i give them then one of the major traps of the shaitan major if it's not one of the biggest ones <coughs> so we have in surah al-ahzab when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to the wives of the prophet and he's saying, وَلَا تَبَرَّجُنُ تَبَرُّجُ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى And don't be on the way of jahiliyyah like the people before you. Imam Al-Tabari, rahimahullah, in his tafsir, he said this speaks about a story. You have to listen carefully now. There were two of the sons of Adam. Some said it's Habil and Qabil, Cable and Abel. Some said it's other people. But the people that used to be the mu'mineen, they used to live on the high levels of the mountain. And these people, the men used to be beautiful and the women used to be slightly ugly. And the disbelievers, they used to live on the lower ends of the mountain and the women used to be extremely beautiful and the men used to be slightly ugly. Now, what happened was, Iblis, he took the form of a boy and he went to the disbelievers. Yeah, They didn't do anything much at that time. When we say disbelievers, they just disobey Allah because they are from the descendants of Qabil. Yeah? And he went, took the form of a boy and he worked. And in the end of his work, he used to take something like a flute and he used to play. And that was the first time ever in the history of mankind where we heard something called music. So the people were amazed. They were like, what is this? We need to make a festival out of that. So what they did was, every single week, and in another narration every single year, but it's more 
going towards the every single week, they used to come together, they used to play music, the women used to beautify themselves and they used to dance. But there is no fornication yet. This is just what's happening. Now, as you know, in a big open space, if there is sound, it echoes and it travels far distances. So the people on the high end, they heard an echoing. They don't know what is it. So the men went down and they saw beautiful women that they never saw before dancing. So they went up, they told them this is what we saw and they came down again and the beautiful man met the beautiful woman and that was the first time in human history fornication started. <coughs> this is the beginning of music on this earth. In Tafsir al-Tabari. Now, did the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam or did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warn us against this? Islamically, we need to know now. Did Allah speak about it? In Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ بِهِ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمِ وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوَةً وَيَتَّخِذُونَهَا هُزُوَةً Subhanallah. Allah is saying, people will come and they would take away the believers from listening to the Qur'an and from reciting the Qur'an and following Islam with lahu al-hadith. Now in different translations, they said this is idle talk, poetry, but who is the best person to explain what this ayah means? A companion. And not only any companion, he was one of the best companions that translated the Quran for us, gave us tafsir. We have two major ones, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So what did Abdullah ibn Mas'ud say now? He's going to understand better than we do, definitely. He said, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu innahu al-ghina. Three times. He said, I swear by Allah that this ayah is speaking about the people that they sing with musical instruments. And look what this ayah is saying. He's saying, Yudullah biha an sabilillah bi ghayr ilm. They take away the people away from Islam, away from the Quran without knowledge. People say music is okay for your soul, ya akhi. Subhanallah, it elevates you. Yeah, it connects with you. بغير علم, without knowledge, this is what they say. They have no knowledge of what exactly music does to you. <coughs> so that's number one. Allah in the Quran mentioned that. Secondly, Allah when He spoke to Iblis, when Iblis didn't want to bow to Adam, He said to him, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ And, you know when someone is trying to int intrigue you, yeah, he's trying to intrigue. He said, "Go, yeah, and intrigue people with your voice." What does he mean here, voice? You never heard Iblis speak before. How is Iblis is going to speak to every single one of us? Istifzaz, Ibn Abbas and Mujahid radiAllahu anhum, one of the best people of Tafsir. They said he is speaking about musical instruments, the sound of musical instruments. Now, subhanAllah, some people might think now and say, Akhi, you know what? I heard music before. Yeah? And it doesn't bother me that much. It's just music. Yeah? Just makes me happy sometimes. If I'm sad, I'll put a CD on. This is what you say. A lot of people say this. But why you don't know that when you listen to music, it replaces the Quran. Because just think of one thing, yeah? Get the best soundtrack or the best track that you love to listen to and play on a CD. And then as soon as it's done and you love that sound, yeah, you love the voice, you love the vocals, the lyrics, the music, everything. As soon as it's done and you're moving with it and your feelings are there, Surah Al-Baqarah. See if you have the same feeling. Straight away. It would never mix. The same way you felt with the song, is never going to be the same way as Surah Al-Baqarah is going to start to play. You're going to feel this a distortion. It's like, what is this? It doesn't go. And if it doesn't go, that's more than enough evidence for you to know. Because if I'm left in Surah Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Surah Al-Qiyamah, all the surahs, 
are okay with me. My heart is still there. If I'm listening to this song and that song and this song, I'm still there. But can I both can I put both them together? La. And this is what the scholars said. And the companions said, Wallahi, the Quran and the music can never come together in one heart. Which is true. Now, subhanAllah, knowing what you know that the Rasul said and explained to you where did the music come from? The beginning of it was shaitan. Can shaitan ever do something good for you now? Ever. Can I take something that shaitan made and make it into a good thing? No. Impossible. His only sole purpose of creating music for you is to take you away from Quran and take you away from Islam. That's the only sole purpose. Now, who's going to be smart and say, you know what, I'm going to use it differently? Yeah? How? Now, some people, subhanAllah, in Islam, they come and say to you, you know what, Akhi? we have scholars that said music is halal. Now, we ask that question, yeah? When you say music is halal, which scholars are you speaking about? Now, we have the companion. We have the companion of the companions, which are the tabi'een. We have the four imams, and then we have scholars after that. So, which one you're actually talking about? The only two people that are well known in Islam in their knowledge that they said music is allowed are powerful scholars. Yeah, Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, yeah, and Ibn Hazm. These two names are big names in Islam, mashallah, but not in the science of hadith. It's not me saying this, it's the ulama and the scholars on that time. If you want to know about Islam and different things, definitely you're going to take from them. But when it comes to Islam, you have to be qualified. If I want to be, if, I'm, if I want to go to a doctor, yeah, to run an operation, I won't go to a pediatrician. I'll go to a surgeon. Yeah, so there's different specialities, isn't it? So their specialty wasn't hadith. And what they say was, there is no authentic hadith that proves that music is allowed. This is what they say. Now we have two scholars against the consent of the companions, consent of the companion of the companions, the tabi'een, and the consent of the four imams with the other imams that used to live in that time. So which one would you choose, Akhi? 98% or 2%? Very simple now. So that's not even close to say there's differences of opinion. Not even close. And why you need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned you against these things. The Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam said, he said it to you very clearly. He said, ummati, people from my nation, Muslims, they're going to come and say, yastahillun, al-istihlal making haram halal. Al-Hira, Zina, fornication. Al-Harir, men wearing silk. Al-Khamri, everything that covers your brain from intoxication. Wal-Ma'azif, and the musical instruments. The Hadith in Bukhari. Show away in your face. He said, people are going to come and say haram, halal. So whatever was haram, it's halal, yakhi. Who's going to say this? From my nation. Muslimin, scholars, they're going to come and say that. So that's a warning from your Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in the Quran repeatedly. Now you have to imagine now, as a person, when we say you have the Quran and you have music. Yeah? Can I mix together both of them? For example, can I listen to Quran and put a background of music behind it just to make it, you know, to spice the Quran up a little bit? If it's halal, why not? The, isn't there people that can recite the Quran in front of some, you know, on the beach and there's the sound of the waves and sound. This is natural. And I'm sitting there and I'm reading Quran. If music is halal, ya khi, why don't I bring a little band and I'm reading Quran and they play music? It's halal. Subhanallah. See, imagine now if a khatib, a beautiful scholar that you know, Stand on the member on Jum'ah with a guitar. 
and he's giving you the advice and he's playing the music and he's explaining to you Bismillah ar-Rahman Today brothers and sisters we're going to explain to you something and the music is going Who do we look like now? Is that Islam? Because if it's okay Sheikh then it's okay we can do it anytime Subhanallah member of member anytime I recite Quran here I recite Quran anytime it's fine but just now that distortion in your mind that's saying this doesn't sound right is more than enough. More than enough for you. The deen of Allah is very simple. Subhanallah Azza wa When he explained about music, he said it to you very simply. And when the people explained to you in the modern times, it's very simple. What did they say now? Modern science and scientists now, they say to you that music plays with the emotion of the person to the extent of you become addicted to music. You know the addiction of cocaine and heroin? Now there's addiction of music. 24-7, headphones on, everywhere you go now. Beats headphones, this headphones, Nokia headphones, everything. People walking down the street, 24-7 listen to music. That is addiction in itself. And what is that? What do we mean about addiction now? It means you have something in your brain, it's called dopamine, that makes you happy, that's always constantly there because you're listening to music. Now well, you have to understand, subhanAllah, where does that dopamine, where does it lie there in the brain? Where, where exactly is it? It's in the frontal lobe, a place in the brain here. And that place consists of your memory. Short memory. We will discuss that before. Short memory, speech, words, actions of your limbs. This is in charge of that. And now you're listening to music, mashallah, and you die. Angel of death comes and he takes away your soul. What are you going to say? What is your short memory remembering? Allah, his messenger, a shahada. Quran. No. Are you remembering this? The lyrics, the beats, the drums. This is what you remember. So is that the state? If it was okay, ya khi, bismillah. Why not? If there's husn khatima, that's a good ending for a person. Why not? But it's not. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. So as simple as it comes to you, even science now is telling you. It's telling you what it does to your body, what it does to your brain. You see the people today, subhanAllah Azza wa Jal, even now the music, you know, the hip hop scene and the R&B scene, it becomes so evil. Everything now with demons and signs and this and shayateen, subhanAllah. Everything now. Nothing is innocent anymore. Yeah, if you look at the history, Three, four hundred years ago, everything was very classical and, you know, high standard and this and that. Now, subhanAllah, everything is shateen and dark and black and teeth and, you know, fingernails and everything. Is that what music is? Is that what Allah wants from you? To be that person. Look at yourself when you go out. The way that you dress. You have your baggies and your pants all the way halfway. You know, your stuff for Allah, your backside is showing. What is that, ya khi? Ajib. That is aib, yani, as a man walking like this, subhanallah. But now it's the hip thing, you know, I can do this. Why? Because of the music, they do that. When did you know about this, ya khi? When did you know about you should leave your backside outside like this? Um, I saw this in a video clip. Oh, the people, where did the people get it from? Oh, from this guy. What is this guy named this and that? Soundtracks. Normally, subhanallah, we never saw that. Wallahi. Ajeeb. Or very tight pants. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful Sheikh. Amazing. You see these things, Akhi, subhanAllah. What are you going to say? This is how you worship Allah when you come to Salah? It's as if you're naked, Akhi, when you pray to Allah. You're not wearing anything. That's the argument now. Is that you, you're going to go to sisters, you're going to say, sisters, hijab. They say, Akhi, I'm wearing jeans. You cannot see my skin. Same thing now, Allahu Akbar. You see, that what music leads to. Show me one good example of a Muslim, a khasha, a person that he prays properly, 
it goes back to Allah properly. He's a good person, praise his salah. MashaAllah, you see the beard on his face, the Quran and everything, but he's a musician. Show me one. Show me only one, yaqi. People say Cat Stevens, Hamza Yusuf. Yeah? So, Yusuf Islam, I'm sorry. Say, yaqi, that's MashaAllah, yaqi. See the beard. Yeah, this guy is in awards. He sits down with people half naked and music and drinking and partying, and he does it himself. Is that a good thing? You think this is da'wah now? Is that what the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam did? When Allah said in the Quran, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيَّ عَدُوْ شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنِّ يُحِي بَعْضُهُمْ زُخْرِ فِي الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا Subhanallah, Allah said, and indeed you have made to every prophet an enemy from shayateen of ins, of humankind, of jinnkind. Why, yani? So it's a difficult path, it's not an easy one. Meaning, if it was easy, Allah said to the Rasul, come on, ya Sheikh, music and everything and drinking and do whatever you want to do, just bring people to Islam. But it's not like that. There is a guideline. There's a certain amount of respect for yourself that you need to have first before you actually call someone. قُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهِ لِيَوْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين. Now what can I do as a person that he listens to music or he's inside that problem? Yeah. The quickest thing that you need to understand now, as we spoke, that Allah سبحانه وتعالى when He gave you the Quran, Shaytan gave you music. So if I want to cancel music, where am I going for now? Quran, the actual thing that the Shaytan was trying to replace. Yeah. That's how you cleanse your heart and you cleanse your mind. There is a, at least a million reciter in the, on the internet. A million. I'm not even exaggerating. Maybe more. Yeah? There is one website, islamway.net or something. You go, Qurra, from A to Z, there is a million list there. Yeah? People that we used to know, me, myself included, when I was trying to listen to Quran, I, was, I would go there and I would check the weird names and I would go listen to them. I don't even know who is he, but he will, sounds weird. So let me go listen to this guy. And mashallah, beautiful sound. Yeah? Because you, are, you have to understand, just, just remember that. You have to know that, yeah? The voice of a person was there in the beginning before the musical instrument. Some people will come and tell you, when you will listen to Quran, isn't that sang in a musical notation? They're trying to be smart. Or some, they're trying to be very sincere. We say to them, Ya Akhi, the voice was the first instrument existed before any musical instrument. The way you tone, you do tonation of any instrument, it's based on your vocal notes. So your vocals is the first thing that Allah gave you, the natural thing. So it's not music that you adjust. We don't adjust our tones to the music. Music came later to adjust on our vocals. So why we, the way we recite Quran, that's the natural thing. If something came next to it and said, listen, we can put this on musical notation, that's a different thing. You are on the natural way to recite the Quran beautifully. SubhanAllah Azza wa So what we say today, we say Allah gave you the Quran to be recited in a certain way. Yeah, and you have millions of Qurra in the Quran in the, on internet and you can go and download and listen to it. That's the first step for you. The first step is to cancel music at all. One time, no music, put Quran and cleanse your heart. That's the first step. <coughs> Nothing else. I cannot tell you, listen, listen to half an hour of this and half an hour of that. It doesn't work that way because the poison is still there and your heart is not going to grasp both of them. So the first thing you need to do, brothers and sisters, yeah, if you have an issue with music and you're suffering, yeah, now you know the music came as a replacement of the actual thing, which is Quran. So what you need to do is cancel this, put Quran, and that's it. And go do your research and share with your brothers and sisters, Akhi, look at this reciter, look at that reciter, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, WhatsApp and Viber and everything, yeah? Just do it on social media and get the edger for it. Yeah, help your brothers and sisters out there because they need that help. But at least you know where you can start now.
yeah? By defeating that shaitan between the Muslim nations, your youth is very easy to love the Quran. Why? Because you present something else. It's not your standard, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem. There is millions of other ways to recite the Quran and all of them are okay. Why? Because it depends on the person, how he interacts with the ayah, how he understands it properly. And this is how he's, he recites it for you. It's beautiful, subhanAllah Azza wa Millions of reciters out there. So the first thing to do, ya akhi, you do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask him to help you replace that shaitan, and you put the Quran as the basis for you. That is the first and the best step to do to defeat music in your heart. Yeah? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the believers that will Allah cleanse the heart from any evil. And you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give support to the brothers and sisters out there. And you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a good knowledge, a good heart, a humble heart, and a way to pray that befits His Majesty. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our knowledge with the proper, correct Islam and the correct teachings of the Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam. I say this, and I pray for you, 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 and I p